Welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 8. This time we're going to be looking at collaboration, cooperation and sharing. And I'll be going over a couple of examples of collaborative learning which are teaching tour and gelati excursion. Um, I'll explain how to make a podcast and we'll look at some teaching ideas for the future. Now Rockwood in 1995 wrote a paper on the difference between cooperative learning and collaborative learning and basically he was talking about co cooperative learning is group tasks with closed ended things normally with the teacher being the instructor. Uh, collaborative learning is when the instructor gives away their authority and gets the students to do all the work in a sense more open ended tasks. So my way of putting these is collaboration is when we're working together to complete something. Cooperation is when we split up the work between us uh, and sharing is when we've each got our own work and we share it with each other. Uh, so this technique is called a teaching tour. Now I've got five groups here and each group studies a different topic. So for science I might have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, water and energy cycles and that would normally take me five lessons to get through with the whole class. However, if I get this group here to study the carbon cycle, so they have 15 minutes to research it and they may use whatever tools are at the disposal. So it may just be their textbook. However, if they've got their phones or their iPads or computers, they can actually research outside the classroom. And they would then spend 15 minutes researching and then 10 minutes preparing their information in this talk. Once they've done that, they would actually practice the talk in their group and we have our red person is the leader who's going to give the talk and they, they're giving it to the group and the group should know what they're doing and they can correct the leader and say, oh no, you have to include this as well. Once they've finished, the group would actually would move around, I'll skip that, and group one is now going to teach about the carbon cycle to group five and they'll spend five minutes teaching them. Group five has to take lots of notes and group one teaches it. And they keep moving around and around and around till eventually group one is back with group, with group one table. Now this group one leader has taught about the carbon cycle four times or five times. Meanwhile, these other group ones have gone around and learned about the other cycles. So now they have to contribute back to group one's understanding by teaching them about all the other cycles. So that everyone in the class basically become, is a teacher and a student. Meanwhile, so they recap. Meanwhile, the te what's the teacher doing this time? Now, uh, we've discussed before, if you have the teacher at the front of the room and all the students just copying notes, the teacher's working 100% of the time on teaching and the students are probably working about 70% of the time. In this method, the teacher has the ability to move around between the groups, making sure that they're covering the stuff that needs to be covered and managing behavior and keeping the groups moving. So now the teacher is doing about 10 or 20% teaching, the students are doing 100% of the learning. The great tools we're doing here is we're researching, collaborating, because we have a shared goal, we're corroborating our understandings by coming back and sharing it back with group one. They're presenting and they have ownership and, and engagement. Now in a mixed ability class, you might actually get the students of lower level ability to be the leaders. That way they're concentrating on one topic. So for the example, this one here doing the carbon cycle can just concentrate on the carbon cycle and become an expert in it. When it comes to the exam questions, your question might be looking at all five topics and you might say, select one of these topics, answer these questions. Now the trick to doing this really well is the teacher has to make sure that the questions they give out to each of the groups really covers the topic. So it's a lot of work beforehand, but then it's not so much work while you're actually teaching. You can see here, this is my class. Some of them are using iPads, some of them are working through the textbook. This student here is our leader, and she's actually writing notes and getting prepared so she can actually talk to others. Then we actually have here, she's reading off her notes. She actually has an iPad sitting just here demonstrating um, the concepts that the other students have helped put it together. And meanwhile, some of these students are writing with their, with their pens and papers. Some of them are taking notes on an on iPad. Some of them even record um, what's going on. So quite an effective technique. Another method that you may be interested in, what I call the gelatissimo prac. Now this could be applied to any excursion you go on uh, for any subject. The idea is the students had to produce a two minute podcast explaining about the history of, of gelati. They could use whatever thing, whatever information they could find. I supplied them no 
information at all. So what they could do is they could speak to the owner, um, they could look at information in the shop, they could look at um, pamphlets they had, they could get on their phones and research about um, gelati and so on. Um, to make it a bit more fun, we've divided groups up into group of four and we bought the super duper ice creams as an example. So it was quite a lot of work. And just to make it more of a challenge, they had to eat this ice cream in the time that they were producing the podcast. The trick to doing this is you need to make sure you give them very good instructions that they can easily follow. This is their assignment here. They had one hour to, to research and produce their document. And in their rubric, it had down the research they had to do, presentation, content, clarity. The students rocked up, we handed them this sheet and we said no words at all. We just handed them the sheet. Once they'd finished, they had to hand back their podcast to me and I was only allowed to press play on the podcast and so they couldn't give me any information as well. Now some of them pre re recorded as a podcast on their phones, some did it as a video cast on their phones, uh, they could have done a podcast, some of them did podcasts on their iPads, but they had all manner of, of technology there you could do it with a dictaphone you could do it with just a simple recording device an ipod or an iTouch or any kind of mp3 recorder um, the good thing is if you're going to an, an, to an excursion to the zoo or the power station or um, to the flinders ranges you can hand them a thing the uh, the sheet beforehand and say you will be producing a podcast of the stuff you need to know here's your assignment the great thing is as a teacher you get the podcast back you can listen to it on the bus on the way back or listen to it there and then and mark it as you go with just quick big ticks and very quickly um, identify whether or not they've passed or failed. So if you're actually going to make a podcast yourself, there's a couple of steps I would suggest. Um, the first thing is set up your area or your stage. Next, do your research. Make sure you understand what you're going to say. Prepare your podcast. So in this case, I've produced a, a PowerPoint. Sometimes it's very hard. If I record in stages and trim them down, it gives me a better idea of how much time I've got. Once you've finished that, import it into your computer or edit using the recording software, and there's quite a few different software that you can use. Once you've finished it, um, export it out to a video and then upload it somewhere. Um, some recording software that you can use on all Mac and PC, you can use Audacity, it's free, or iMovie. I use ScreenFlow, which costs money because it allows me to record what's on the screen as well as my voice and my video, and I can import everything in, and it does the um, editing as well. This is probably the the best program I've seen. On the PC, again, Audacity, Windows Movie Maker comes with it. Photo Story 3 is a really good one for converting pictures into a narrated story, and Cam Studio is, not, is a similar to ScreenFlow, and it's free to download. On the iPad, you've got a really good one called Explain Everything, and Screen Chomp is free. So if I want to actually do some editing, it doesn't really matter what software you use, it's all pretty much the same. You have some part where you can view your video you're working on, you have all your different video pieces or files, and down the bottom you've got your storyboarder in a sense. So if I hit play, I can say, well I don't actually want this piece here, so I can edit it. So one thing I can do is I can actually go in, I can go edit, and I can go split clip, trim, and go, okay, I don't want that section. Perhaps I want something else, so I can drag in a new piece, drop it in, and go, no worries, and I would, and then go from there. Now, I don't actually want that, so I can delete that. Remember as well that you have to fill in your gaps, otherwise you end up with a blank screen. Now, once you've finished everything, go up top to File and Export, and this will export it out as a movie file that you can then use, upload to YouTube or whatever and we've discussed modularized learning and problem-based learning. Now we've discussed uh, teaching tours and jigsawing and so on. Generally, what we see in most classes is the teacher is that sits at the front of the class and the students have to listen to what they're doing. Um, it's difficult within one class to break it down into one need. However, you can actually use technology um, to provide virtual instruction, individual classwork and computer facilitated instruction and cooperative learning um, and really utilize the, those digital technologies to push out the information for the students. The good thing is that you can adjust the students as need be uh, and the students learn in the way that's best for them. Now over in North America, they've taken it to the nth degree and there's been some amazing stuff done in that 
to go from this single teacher teaching a group of students all at the same time, all at the same speed, to a very diverse range of teaching strategies within one class, and they have an artificial intelligent unit running the school. So students, some students learn best individually, others work best with uh, uh, like in virtual instruction, like videos and so on. Some work best by interactive, and some work best working in teams. And the stu- the, te- the computer goes through and says, okay, little Johnny, we're first of all gonna get you to work on your own. And at the end of the day, it turns out that little Johnny doesn't learn very well with, with uh, the maths on his own. So the next day, or next it will put him into a virtual instruction and then into com- so on, into uh, interactive instruction and so on. So eventually it knows how little Johnny learns maths. Now it'll be different. He may learn English uh, in, in a cooperative group, but he actually prefers to learn in, uh, maths interactively uh, on a computer. And the computer learns how each student works. So when the student rocks up, if there's a group available uh, for English, then little Johnny rocks up and says, oh, you've got English today with your group. Or if the group are off doing other stuff, he'll rock up and say, right, you've got math today on your own. Uh, So such an interesting new field uh, to go in. The teachers are acting like real learning facilitators and moving around. There's very, very low levels of behavior management they have to worry about. Uh, the students are always engaged because they're learning in the method that's best for them. Very, very, very hard to timetable. Uh, and you, you really do need a, com- um, a computer to be running because the timetable changes daily. The discussion board this week, I'd like you to work out how would you get a class to work collaboratively without using technology? No technology at all. Um, so no iPads, no phones. Um, I'll, I'll, <laughs> we'll allow books and um, talking and everything. Uh, the second one is, okay, now change it up. If you're using technology, what can you do then? Um, and thirdly, can you? Uh, what I'd like you to do is post to this and say, what can I do to improve these podcasts for next semester or next year? Um, so this time we looked at standard one, know the students and how they learn. Standard four, how to create safe and supportive learning environments. And number six is engage in professional learning, which is uh, how to work with other teachers and so on. Finally, really good luck with your teaching placement. Get involved, get excited, um, throw yourself into it. So, good luck. Some top tips for your teaching placement. Number one is work like your career depends on it. It really does. The more work you do, the harder you work, the more likely you are to get employed by that place. Um, Number two, always be willing to give extra help. So that's to your teacher. Um, your supervising teacher, your mentor, the students, whatever. Just throw yourself into it. Seek further clarification. So if you're not really sure about something, check with the teacher and always make sure you do it beforehand. If you can, if something happens in the class, so be it. Create content. Really, this is one of the times when you get to get your all your stuff proofread. So that's important. Um, and so you can create really good stuff and then see how that works. Engage with the class, so don't be boring. Don't just lecture. If you stand at the front, and I've talked, we've talked about presentation skills. If you stand at the front and talk to the students as if you, they're just writing down the notes and you're not engaging with them, they're going to be bored. They're going to switch off. You're not going to get anything. Um, talk with the other teachers and also visit other classes. So make sure that you are seeing how other teachers do it. You might want to see if other teachers teach quite differently. I've had seen experience where one teacher will teach directly from the board, whereas the teacher in the next door teaching exactly the same stuff, teaches from the back of the room and really engages the class. And both of them believe that their style is the best. Uh, so it's good that you get to see lots of different styles. And lastly, with the students, be friendly and not not a friend. You're not the friend of the students. It doesn't matter if you're a year or so older than them or if you're 50 years older than them. You're not their friend. You are, you can be friendly and positive, but you're not there to make friends. Make friends with the other teachers, but don't make friends with the students. Um, it's very hard for students to understand the boundaries. If you are friendly with them, then they can really go, okay, no problems, I understand where the boundary is, but if they think you're their friend, they'll come up and they'll start treating you like a friend, um, and you, there's all sorts of issues that can happen. So, honestly, good luck. Enjoy yourself and don't be shy. Really, just throw yourself into it. Um, Yeah, good luck.